This is my modded GameCube. It has been modified to play backup games from ROM files loaded onto an SD card. This is possible using the newest mod in the GameCube community known as the Picoboo mod thanks to WebHDX. It uses a Raspberry Pi Pico board to bypass the GameCube's BIOS and boot directly into any homebrew application such as Swiss upon powering on the console. The mod overall is great, I haven't experienced any issues with it thus far. The best part for me being how cheap it is for you to do it yourself. Though it is rather easy for some, the biggest hurdle to get over for someone without much experience would definitely be the wiring. Well, thanks to my homie Helder, there is now an awesome flex cable that makes this install even easier. So here it is guys, the Helder Game Tech Flex Cable for the Pico Boot. Now there are two different versions depending on if you have the 001 or the 101 model GameCube. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is flash the UF2 file onto the Pi. All you need to do for this is download the file, hold the button down on the Pico and plug it into your computer. You should see it pop up and you can release the button. Then just drop the file onto the Pico and it will eject. Once that's done, you're good to unplug the Pico. While we're at it, let's go ahead and get our SD card loaded up and make sure it's formatted to FAT32. Download the latest Swiss release, rename it to IPL.dull, and then drop it onto the root of your SD card. I already have my games preloaded, so all I need to do is drop that file. I already have it renamed to IPL.dull, so all I have to do is drag and drop it right onto the root. Once that's done, we can just eject our SD card. So let's go ahead and solder our Pico to our flex cable so it's ready to install once we open up our GameCube. As you can see, it fits pretty perfectly right on top right here. There's three pins that have to be soldered on the right side here. And then as you can see on the back, there's a few errors to secure the Pico to the flex cable. So I like to start by getting some solder on this middle point right here. And then same thing with a little bit of solder on the middle pin. So then I just set it right in place, line it up, make sure it looks good, and bridge those points together. And once I have that in, I just go ahead and fill the rest of the points in. And when you're done, it should look something like that. I did a couple extra points just for fun. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and set that aside and go ahead and tear down our GameCube. So for this, I'll be using my favorite color GameCube, the Orange Spice GameCube. So let's go ahead and tear this thing down. Go ahead and take the top off and set it aside. You won't need that right this second. And then make sure you don't lose any of your screws. So I go ahead and remove the back so it doesn't fall out. And then go ahead and pop this front part off right here, the controller ports, pop that out and set that aside. Now this is what we're looking at. So the first thing I usually do is unplug the fan. And then as you can see, there are four screws in the front right here, and then like 15 screws around the sides and the back. This one having a little electric screwdriver definitely comes in handy. Two screws on the sides for the fan. And the fan should just pop right out once you get that screw loose. And then just kind of feed the cable out. And you can set the fan aside. That should lift right up. You can go ahead and set that aside. All right, so the next thing we have to do is remove this heat sink. So there are six screws in here. All right, so this heat sink is stuck here with some thermal pads, but I've been getting pretty lucky lately popping them out without damaging them. So let's go ahead and see if we can get lucky right now. Be careful you're not putting any pressure on any components underneath. Oh, 
that's all right. We didn't do too bad. We got one. We got all these three. These, this one got a little stuck, so we'll go ahead and replace that. But for now, we'll just move on. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this flex cable lays in. So the way it works is the sticky side is right here. What we want to do is first line it up. As you can see, there are solder points that line up with the existing legs right here. So once you see how they line up, you can go ahead and peel the back of this off to expose the adhesive, line it up one more time, see exactly where the leg's supposed to go, and then evenly press this into place around these points right here. And there we have it. You can tape it additionally if you feel like you need to, but I've been pretty lucky so far like this. And then this is the hardest part of the install is just making sure you don't bridge any of these points right here and tack these into these legs really well and get a nice clean amount of solder on each point. I'm gonna actually use a little bit finer solder for this one just so I don't put too much. I'm gonna start on the bottom leg. That one's in. Start in the middle, one of the middle points over here. What I do is I kind of tin the pad a little bit on the top right there where it's gold. And then I kind of just sweep it over. like that. Now we only have two more. All right, that should be good. Let me get a closer look. And it should look something like that. All right, now that we have the hard part done, all we got to do is put the GameCube back together. So first thing is the heat sink. All right, next thing is the disk drive. Don't forget this. Should pop right in. I like to do these three screws next so I can go ahead and put the fan back on. And now that we have the fan reinstalled, we can actually go ahead and peel this back off and stick it right here. Just make sure it's clean. All right, press that right in. Really nice design how that just sticks like right there. That's great. Let's carry on getting all these screws back in. Don't forget to put the back back on. And reinstall your controller port. Now we go ahead and put the top back on. Everything clicks in. Screw it all back together. And install our memory card. Now there's two different ways that you can load SD cards into this thing. You can do it through the front. There's a port for that. And then there's also a port on some GameCubes that have this serial port available. You can plug it in right there. That's the way we're gonna go because I think it looks a little bit cleaner. Go ahead and take our SD card, plug it in, and go ahead and slide that right in. And there we have it. Let's go plug it in and see if it works. So we got our GameCube all hooked up to this TV right here. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on and show you guys how it looks. So when you first power it on, it's gonna load this splash screen right here, and then it's gonna boot into Swiss, and then you should have folders and be able to select your games folder. So selecting our games folder right here, all my games are preloaded. I have a 128 gigabyte card, so that's about 80 games. Let's scroll down to one, a fan favorite.
loads it up, and there we go. Let's go and play and see how it feels. He's messing me up. So it's working great. It was a super clean install. I want to give a big shout out to Helder again for designing this flex cable, making it even easier to do this PicoBoot install. And shout out to WebHDX for designing the PicoBoot mod. All links to the flex boards and anything else I use in this video will be down in the description box below. Stay tuned for a future vid where I'll show you a super simple way to add RGB Bluetooth controllable LEDs to the controller ports of the GameCube.